Nice to meet you. I'm Jason. I'm one of the co-founders of Story Protocol. And at Story Protocol, what we're building is what we call the programmable IP layer. Our mission at Story Protocol is to allow any creator to bring their IP on chain and turn their IP into a network. So I want to talk a little bit about what programmable IP is and why Story Protocol feels like it's so important to have this technology out into the open. So the most important thing to understand and the best way I describe programmable IP is taking the analogy and the comparison with DeFi. If you think about what DeFi did for money, which is to make it programmable, we're doing that for IP. So the comparison between non-programmable money and programmable money is the idea of the static dollar bill that I have in my wallet in the physical world compared to a token like USDT or USDC, which has the exact same dollar value, but it has the ability to plug into this entire decentralized ecosystem of financial applications. So I can take a USDT token and swap it on Uniswap for ETH I can stake that ETH on Lido for staked ETH, and then I can use that staked ETH and lend it on a lending protocol, maybe like Compound, to get Compound staked ETH. And I can do this entire complicated process of operations without any intermediaries, just by the power of software. So what DeFi did was it took money and it turned it into software, and we believe the same thing should be done in IP. Because right now, intellectual property and the characters that we all love, the stories and the films that we all love, are secured basically just by mountains and mountains of paperwork. And it's extremely inefficient. That means that most of the times, the individual creators don't have the ability to license and monetize their work because they would need an entire legal team in order to transact or license their IP. And so right now, only the biggest studios in the world have access to licensing IP. So what we want to do is we want to bring IP on chain and bring it onto Story Protocol and allow that IP to become programmable. Meaning there can be not just an entire financial ecosystem on the blockchain, but an entire parallel creative ecosystem with apps that help creators with licensing, with creating new types of content, and with going direct to their community. Um, so before Story Protocol, I had the opportunity to be a, pro a product manager at DeepMind, and DeepMind is an AI lab at Google. So it was a really fun experience there, and my role there was to take the research coming out of the labs and find ways to productionize it. Because a lot of this AI research, while it was extremely interesting, uh, one of the most interesting things that DeepMind did was to create an AlphaGo algorithm that would play Go and actually be one of the best Go players in the world. Uh, at the same time, though, this research was extremely uh, siloed and only available to academics. So my job there was to take that AI research and find ways to turn it into real concrete products for consumers. And at Story Protocol, we do very much the same thing, which is to take really advanced blockchain technology and find ways to make it tangible for creators without them having to understand a single thing about how the technology works. So that's really what excited me is, you know, at the end of the day, AI research is very advanced and I felt like it was inevitable. But at the same time, blockchain is a very powerful general purpose technology, but there's no real mainstream consumer use case yet. So it feels like there's a lot of opportunity and a big problem to solve with blockchain. And so I think that's how Story Protocol uh, really got started. So the way we think about Story Protocol's utility and the benefit it provides to creators is really in two different directions. The first direction is about protecting IP and tracking the provenance and, uh, and attribution of IP as it evolves across different internet platforms and even different mediums. So one thing that creators really need is a way to prove that they own their IP and to really have 100% ownership of that. So we think that blockchain is a perfect technology to ensure true ownership of intellectual property. On the other hand, one of the benefits that Story Protocol provides that people actually don't really think about when they first hear about us is the ability not just to defend IP, but to play offense and to allow that IP to grow over time. Because a big part of what allows IP to grow is the ability to license IP and let other people, your fans, your community members, build on top of it. But right now, there's no real infrastructure to enable licensing at scale. Like I said before, licensing is this extremely expensive 
process that only people with very large legal teams can participate in. And so what we're trying to do is to almost turn licensing into an API and to bring all of the licensing rights about an IP on chain. That way anyone can actually program apps that can license and transact and remix IP permissionlessly, making the transaction cost of creating new IP really low. So the second benefit that we provide is really enabling creators the ability to go direct to their community and remix IP at scale, allowing their IP to turn into a network and grow bigger than it could if they were just trying to build it individually. Are we good? So one question that we get very often at Story Protocol is how AI will intersect with IP and especially in relations to what we're doing at Story. The way that I like to explain what's happening in the media world, in the content world with the rise of generative AI is by starting with a question. And that question is, why are we not living in a second renaissance? Because if you think about it, at face value, the internet and generative AI have combined to create a really powerful trends for creators. The first is that social media and the internet has allowed everyone to become a creator that can access the entire world from their living room. So if I post a TikTok video, it can reach a million, 10 million people in a single day. And the second trend is that generative AI is really supercharging the ability for people to not just to create content that can reach everyone, but to create really high quality content. So you can see OpenAI's video model that just came out called Sora, and it's almost indistinguishable from a real Hollywood AAA movie. And that's a really powerful tool. So creators now have global distribution and godlike tools in their living room. So why are they struggling to monetize? Actually, we saw Hollywood had two strikes last year. The actors and the, and the writers were striking for almost six months. So even though we have all these tools at our disposal, creators are still unable to capture and monetize their IP. And that's what we're trying to solve at Story Protocol, right? Because although generative AI has been really good for creativity, there's clearly a lot of challenges that we're starting to see. First of all, ChatGPT and OpenAI just got sued by the New York Times because New York Times was just replicating the content word for word. And then we also saw really interesting experiments where there was a, someone who actually from their living room created a Drake and The Weeknd remix. So this was a song that used Drake's voice and The Weeknd's voice without their permission. And it actually jumped to number one on SoundCloud within a matter of days. We're also seeing this on YouTube where people were creating a Harry Potter and Balenciaga remix that got tens of millions of views in just a matter of weeks. But the problem right now is despite these interesting experiments, we're still in a lose-lose situation where both JK Rowling, the Drake, and The Weeknd aren't able to actually capture the value of any of that remixing. And also the people who spent a lot of time creating those songs and creating those films, they don't get to capture anything either because it's illegal. So we have this new Napster moment where AI is both inevitable, you can't stop it, we're not going to shut it down, but it's also illegal. And so what we're trying to do as Story is really provide a provenance and attribution layer for IP so that every single piece of content can attest to what kinds of rights it wants to give, how other people can build and monetize on top of that, so that not just ordinary programs, but also AI models can use that IP, but compensate the original creators for their work. And this way we can really create a social coordination game where both the original creators as well as the remixers get to earn and monetize off of their contents while respecting the data provenance. Uh, and all of that is really stored on Story Protocol. So the thing that people often get wrong about Story Protocol is that we're going to create all the apps and all the services and all the solutions just for the creators. Actually, Story Protocol is building a real infrastructure layer. And what that means is that truly we're targeting developers and entrepreneurs and builders who will build an entirely brand new category of applications using programmable IP. And we believe that those builders will then communicate and build for the end users. So Story Protocol isn't here to build every app. We actually want to empower other developers to build on top of the core protocol. So we've already, we're, we're doing this at ETH Denver where we have a big hackathon and we've had over 30 teams submit brand new projects on top of the protocol. And we think that that number will only grow. So the way that we really see our company evolving is by the strength and the power of our developer ecosystem. And at the end of the day, we are a developer company. So if you want to build on Story Protocol or you have an idea about how your existing application or a brand new application can integrate with us, we want you to reach out to us. We have a builders program, we have grants, and we're happy to share more about what ideas we think will be really successful, but also want to hear more about the brand new ideas that you might have. Okay. A lot of times people and developers will come and ask about what ideas they think can be built on Story Protocol that will really change the landscape of creativity. First of all, I want to say that we are not the experts. We believe that the developers are the experts. And we've actually had hackathons where we gave suggestions to builders about what apps they could build. And they actually ignored all of our suggestions and built brand new apps. So that's actually really exciting to us. We think that 
the, the design space is really endless. And so I just want to say, I don't think as Story Protocol, we have all the answers. The reason why we're building Story Protocol is because we believe that developers are the ones that are really going to take this infrastructure and do brand new things with it. So with that caveat, some of the things that I find interesting and exciting that can be built on Story Protocol, number one are AI-based applications. As I mentioned before, AI is really struggling now because there's no native monetization in IP tracking software that really can allow people to create AI and create new art in a sustainable way. So we're excited about not only creating uh, IP provenance around data that can be put into AI models, but also about storing AI models themselves as IP on chain. Because an AI model can be fine-tuned and remixed just like an IP, and we're really excited about what, what could happen if AI models moved on Story Protocol. So that's one category. Another category is creator tools. So we've actually work, worked with some creator tools in the Web2 space that have no understanding of blockchain, but they can integrate with Story Protocol already to store the outputs of what's created in the creator tool on Story Protocol. And that's really powerful because if I register my art as a creator on the protocol, maybe after editing it on Photoshop, for example, that means I have access to global liquidity and an entire community of creators from all around the world that can tap into that IP. Because at the end of the day, all IPs that are registered on Story Protocol are universal and shared across all of the apps. So we're really creating a network effect around IP. And we think that a lot of creator tools can supply IP that allows those creators to monetize and get licensing from around the world. Another category that we've seen is social media. So we've actually integrated with a few social media apps so that when you post your art or your video or your creation on a social media app, before posting it, you can actually set the terms for how people can monetize and license your IP both on top of that app and beyond that app. So it's a simple few clicks before uploading a social media post and it integrates exactly into the normal user flow. But we think that by providing a legal layer onto social media, we can really allow creators to monetize in a way that wasn't possible before. And the last category, is around actually bringing IP on chain as a real world asset. Because IP is actually an asset class that is very siloed and many people are not able to participate in investing in IP, we actually think it's really interesting to create a new category called IP5, which is allowing IP to be a real world asset, allowing IP to move on chain. And IP can be used, for example, as collateral in a lending protocol, or IP can be fractionalized and create liquidity around IP. So we think that this is another really interesting category where IP can not only be something that empowers creators, but something that people who are engaged in DeFi can also uh, create price discovery and new financial models around. So one thing that a lot of developers ask us, and it's a great question, is, well, don't NFTs already sort of solve IP? Aren't NFTs already bringing IP on chain? And our response to that as Story Protocol is that NFTs are a great foundational layer and they're a great first step, but they're not enough. If you think about what an NFT is, it's all it's doing is really bringing a pointer to a media file on chain. So the benefit is that you get some level of provenance and attribution and you're able to move culture on chain, but it's not composable. So it's an isolated atom, but what we're trying to do at Story Protocol is to allow each piece of content to interact in a multiplayer way. Right now, IP on chain is still very single player. If I have a board A born a Zuki and I wanna create a comic book with the Pudgy Penguins, I immediately have to go and read a license that's off chain. And then I have to go read the license for the pudgy that's also off chain. And that basically requires me to either be a lawyer or to hire a lawyer. So we're back into the high friction world of traditional licensing. And so what we're doing that's different from NFTs is that we're adding not just media, but rights on chain. Because at the end of the day, IP is not just media, it's media plus rights. And so we're adding that rights layer, that licensing layer on chain that allows IPs to compose and interact with each other without needing anyone to intervene and without needing complicated legal transactions. So I want to conclude by just talking about my vision and Story Protocol's vision for what blockchain can do for creators in the future. The first thing is I'll say, I mean, we're all very inspired by crypto. That's why we're working in it. But at the end of the day, I think one of the reasons why we've struggled as an industry to reach mainstream adoption is because we've been so focused on innovating on the financial system. And building stable coins, building stable stores of value, building this parallel financial ecosystem is extremely important and valuable. But at the same time, as people, we don't spend most of our time on finance. We don't spend most of our time on Charles Schwab or Robinhood or trading stocks. We spend most of our time and hours of our day on TikTok, on Netflix, consuming culture. Uh, at the end of the day, humans are creative animals. And I think that one thing that's been really lacking in the industry is ability to actually bring this culture and this creativity on chain and to empower not just existing creators in Web2, but also an entirely new class of creators to really monetize and make a living off of what they love to do. And I think that even though the, the challenge may seem very big, 
I want to remind everyone that at the end of the day, every new media technology, it doesn't start by going to the people who are winning before. So the best example I like to use is YouTube. YouTube did not go to Hollywood and ask people to put Hollywood movies on YouTube. YouTube actually allowed an entirely new class of creators who had just iPhones in their bedrooms creating random videos. That's what really propelled YouTube to power. And they created an entirely new class of creators like Mr. Beast that didn't exist before. And so I think blockchain is going to be the same way. I think we have a lot of work to do in Hollywood, but there's so many creators out there that we just don't know about yet. And they're going to be empowered by the technology we're building. So it, it may seem like a long distance away, but these things tend to happen slowly and then all at once. And I think that in the next few years, we're going to see a lot of interesting content being created natively on chain. And I think our dream at Story Protocol is to see the next Marvel, the next Disney, the next big story, not come from the traditional process of IP, but actually come from this bottoms up, decentralized, community governed process. And we think it'll grow even bigger than the biggest franchises today. So just to conclude, I'm, I'm here talking at ETH Denver and all around me are thousands of builders, you know, building brand new projects. Some of them are DeFi, some of them are IP, and actually some of them are in Story Protocol. But I just wanted to say that I'm really excited about what we're doing in the blockchain industry. I think the next wave of blockchain is going to reach millions and millions of users. And most importantly, we're going to lead with the use cases. We're not going to talk just about the technology. We're going to talk about the brand new use cases and consumer benefits that can be unlocked by blockchain. So I really encourage everyone to, you know, not just build on blockchain, but also consider building on Story Protocol as we enter this next generation of consumer applications. Cool. Yeah. Awesome.